And once they all get pulled together with all the screws, they'll work out perfectly. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and welcome to a, another one of my tutorials. I'm going to be talking about a tutorial uh, from one of my current projects and I am currently building one of the Fiat Mephistopheles, which is a 112 scale uh, speed record car from the 1920s, 1930s. And it's 112 scale and it's quite big and it's got wire wheels. So let me show you what I mean. So these are the wheels that I'm working on at the moment. Now, as they come in the kit, they're plastic molded, but we'll look from the overhead. Now, if I get in a bit closer, you see, it's probably a bit too close, eh? How about here? Yeah, it's better. Now you see how it's got the spokes. They're all plastic molded. They're a little bit thick for my liking. And when you get them, they're actually like this. So they come on a sprue of four components. So you see how there's spokes on each one and then they're screwed together and you sandwich them to get them like this. Now, when you look at photos of the actual car, so there is a picture of the actual car here, the spokes, maybe a bit hard to see there, are actually really, really fine. They're more noticeable here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I've re-spoked these wheels with a thin metal so that they look more realistic. So here's one that I've done earlier. So something that's been re-spoked and the original. Now, you'll be able to see the differences. You got the two together and that's chalk and cheese. Now, when you look at individual spokes here, what I've used here is 0.3 millimeter spring steel wire, which is from the K&S range, but any fine wire will do, even fine uh, wire that you use for guitar strings or such will be suitable. Now, what I've done is you'll see there's more spokes compared to this one, because this has actually got only half the amount of spokes that were on the real car. So I've doubled that up to make it more realistic. You see how much more three-dimensionality there is and how much more transparency there is going, looking through there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I will put these aside. Now, here's the one that I've done earlier as well. So you can see how this is all sandwiched together and I've replaced all the spokes. So there's actually a total of 72 spokes that have been remade. Okay, so let's start off with one of these and I'll show you how I go about considering what to do. Now, this is quite specific for this particular kit. It's got the four sandwich parts. You can also do this for other cars as well. I think the FX Bentley blower has less parts, so you'll need to approach it in a different way. So in this, this is probably easier in a way because what I'm gonna do is scribe the lines so that there's areas for the spokes to actually lock into. Now, if you had only one molding and it had multiple spokes, you'll need to think about where you cut off the spokes to re-drill holes to put in the new spoke. But for this um, tutorial, I'll just show you on how to do this and you should be able to replicate this on some motorbike models as well. So we'll start off with the easiest one. So if you're considering what to do, try to find the easiest version to do first. Some of these are curved. See these ones here? Okay, so they've got a bend to them. Now they're gonna take a bit more work I'll start with this totally flat one. And what we'll do is, because these are all totally true, they're designed to be dead center. We'll replace one spoke at a time, rather than cut everything off and then try to find the center. And then as we do that, we can screw it all together and make sure our new parts are true. So let's get this off first. Now these particular parts are a little bit agricultural. It's quite an old kit, but even for its age, it's still quite a nice kit okay so we just cut that off we trim off this this flash it's not going to be super important at the moment because this inside part goes inside the tire and it doesn't have to be totally perfect okay so here we go there's the part we're going to be working on now if I cut this in a bit tighter actually let's pull this out and in like this Okay, so we have the wheel here. As you can see from the reflections, it is pretty flat from this point to the center hub as well. And the important part is to replace, something like this, I would want to replace three spokes while the rest is still attached to make sure that's all in the center. 
Now what I need to do is I'm going to make some scribe lines because I'm going to make the wire a bit longer so it sits within here and it will be glued in place with some CA glue. Now to do that I'm going to need a ruler. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the exact line so that we can scribe from the inside of this hub to the outside. Now for scribing we're going to need some scribing tools. So what I'm going to use is these god hand scribes here. This particular one is just a point so it's just like an awl called the curve and this one is called the gerade which is for doing straight lines. Now I find that this particular one has a bit more control for this particular job. So any sharp awl like so would be fine for this. And this is just going to create the guideline first. Now we'll put in this particular god hand pin vise. Now you can use these in any pin vise. It's just that this particular one has got the long shank so you can see how deep that the, the bit fell in and it's got the blunt end so it can actually fit within your, your grasp here without uh, digging into uh, the palm of your hand. Okay. <clears throat> Alright so we've got our our bit there. We'll just get our ruler lined up. Actually before I do this I'm going to put on my trusty mag visors. These are the nine step ones because this is going to be quite tight work and without wearing these I won't be able to really see what I'm doing. Okay so we want to mark the center of this spoke which would be about here. Okay so we just press that in there it'll leave a little dot. Now what I can do is I can align the ruler up to where it needs to be Use that hole as a guide again. Okay, straighten that up. So I'm pretty happy with the, where that is. And I'm just going to gently pull this across the surface, and this is scraping out a line. Now, if we do this a few times like that, take the rule off. Now, as I rotate that, you'll see with the reflection, I've just scribed in a little line. Okay, so that's your guideline. We're going to be opening that up because that needs to be big enough for the 0.3mm wire to fit into. So basically we're going to need to scribe in about 0.3 to 0.4mm deep into this plastic. Now the other thing we're going to do is we need a section here which is going to accept the wire. Now the best way is we're going to bend that into a dog leg so it's going to be a right angle and it's going to meet in here and again we're going to have to scribe a line. So we use the same tools again so I've got my awl, find the center point of where you're going to bend it, mark it like so, and then we'll get our ruler. And following that spoke, we'll get it at right angles. Okay, so let's just find that mark I made here, push it up there. And then we're just going to scribe a line. Where is it? There we go. Now we're going to scribe it at right angles because that's going to be the easiest to bend later in our music wire. I'm just scraping that all the way across. Okay, so that we get a line there as well. So you can just see that there with the reflection. Okay, so we've got the straight line there and we've got the little right angle one on the inside hub. Now they're just guides. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to change our, our scribing bit to something that's going to take out more material. Okay, so I'm going to put back this all type one. I'll take this out. And I'm going to be using these guide hand bit blade. Okay, so what we've got here is different angles of machining. And I'll pull them out, I'll see if I can get those to get the reflection for you. So you can see how they're a blade like such. Now when you look at it from this angle, that's the actual 15 degrees is the angle that it's been machined from the sides. Okay, so obviously this one's gonna be the thinnest one, it's gonna give the thinnest line. What I've found is actually the third one across works very well for this particular application. Okay, and that particular one is a 45 degree 
angled cut. Okay, so you'll see that there. So it's a little bit thicker, a bit broader. And if I turn to the cutting edge, I'm not sure you can see that, but it's got, uh, it's probably around about a 0 0.3, 0 0.4 mil cutting edge there. Now with scribing blades, quite often scribing blades are used in a, a motion which is following the line like this. This one is actually going to be used more like a cold chisel and be pushed forward like this. And what you find is with this particular method, you'll have a lot of control in removing material. Just going to have the angle right. Okay, so if you're pushing it this way, and it needs to be a fairly flat angle to that cut curve, because if you do it too acutely, it'll just dig into the plastic and you won't be able to move it uh, with much control. Okay, so the idea here is we'll get our scribe line and this blade will follow that scribe line to give you a nice scribed channel. Okay, so we've got that in there. It's nice and tight. So let's start working on the outer. Okay, so I've got this in here. You'll see that the angle is about so that I'm going to work with. And we're just going to slowly scribe out this line until it goes deeper. You just do it slowly. You see some material coming off now. Now we need to go quite deeply, but to have the control, you need to do it slowly at this quite flat angle. Okay, so we've just cut in a little channel. You'll be able to see there from the reflection. Now it's not perfectly straight to your spoke, it doesn't really matter. Close enough is pretty good, I think. Because you can open that up and have the channel sort of move further towards the center. But I think that's not too bad. It's probably out by, I don't know, maybe 0.2 or 0.1 of a mil. But we will be following that up with some material getting removed from the other direction now. So let's just do exactly the same thing. Now to judge how deep you need this, you just need a bit of your wire, which I have here. So these are a piece of my 0.3 music wire from KNS. Let's get rid of this debris. Now all I'm going to do is look at the channel and we'll measure the wire. We'll drop the wire in there and see if it sits down flat because we want it to be flush with the edge. Now at the moment we're just running my fingernail across it and it is about right. I think that's good. So it's deep enough. All right, so I'm going to stop on that one and we'll start working on the center hub. So using exactly the same tool again, we're going to work on this inner hub. So just gently cut into it. Exactly the same method we did for doing the outer rim. And we, again, we want to get it down to about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 mil, so that this spoke is flush. Okay, so that's going towards the inside. Clear it up, and we'll do it again from the other way. Okay, so that feels pretty deep. So as you can see, it didn't take very long. Now let's do exactly the same thing. We're going to get our wire and see how it fits within this inner hub. Just use my fingernail to rub across the, the top there to see if it's, it's seating enough. And that's pretty good. So with that, our channels are done. Ready for accepting the spoke. So now what we're going to do is actually create the spoke. Okay, so we're going to get our wire. <coughs> I have some very fine needle nose pliers. These are made by Godhand. And you can see just how fine 
the tips are. Okay, so fine tips are just going to help with control of the edge. <coughs> okay, let's get our pliers in there and we'll bend it into a right angle. Just like so. Okay, so there's our right angle. Now with the right angle, that's just going to sit on the inside hub. So we'll just measure it up here. Okay, so you see that. It's actually bent at a right angle, but it's not sitting in the channel correctly. So that doesn't matter. It just means that we're going to straighten out that angle a little bit so that it does follow the original spoke angle. Okay, so I'm just going to use my pliers. Like so, and we're just going to open it up a little bit. Okay, so that the angle is actually not a right angle anymore. But that should fit within here better. Okay, so once we've got that in there, so you can see that now, how it's actually following the path of the spoke that we want. And so the only other thing we need to do now is we need to cut this spoke so that it fits within here. Now with that, I've got just some wire cutters. I'm just using some of these big pliers. A bit agricultural, but it doesn't have to be super smooth because you won't be seeing this again. So we'll just quickly measure that up. Oops, let's do it this way around. Now what we want to do is we want the length to be about the same or a bit shorter. Longer we don't want because it's going to poke out and probably interfere with the tire. So it's poking out probably about two or three mil too much. So let's just move that in a bit. Check it again. Now that's probably closer to where we want it. Okay, so we just cut it. And there we go. So there's our spoke. Let's clean this plastic off. Okay, so we've got our spoke and we've got our channels. So at this point, we can get rid of this spoke that we're replacing. So I've got some sharp side cutters here. We just trim this off. Okay, so there's a spoke removed. Now we'll get a sharp knife and we'll trim those edges up. Now this is why I like to replace one to start with and then we'll do another one here and another one on the other side. And then once we've got the three, that would have, have centered the, the hub perfectly and then we'll cut off all the rest and replace the rest. So this is mainly for orientation. So let's just trim this off. Trim off the side here as well. Okay, so that's trimmed ready for the spoke. Now before we go on with that, you might notice that on these I've done here, the actual inside, I've got the, I guess you call it like the the ring or the rivet that's holding the, um, the wire spoke onto the rim. So I'm just going to show you how I replicate that. That is simply some half, actually one mil tubing. So it's this brass tubing and I'll just cut this very finely into a ring. <coughs> so all I need is, I've got a sanding block here. So I've got 400 grit. What I'll do is I'll just polish the end a little bit. look yep because basically where I cut it from last time it's going to look a little bit jagged now this is the end that's going to be showing so I want to make sure that it's it looks nice and flat okay so once we've done that we get we need a knife I get my cutting mat as well and all we're going to do is we're going to get our blade into here and we're going to score it all the way around until it cuts its way through. So this is like a very rudimentary tube cutter. So I'm just going to roll this. You do it gently. So it goes all the way around. And then you slowly repeat the motion until it cuts through. 
So I might take a little bit of time. So you feel it scoring its way through with the blade. And there we go. So I've got my little ring right there. And that's going to be <coughs> the little eyelet for the spoke. So I've got my spoke here now. Just gotta be really careful that I feed this on correctly. So that's a side that I've already polished. And that's a side that's gonna be visible. So that's where I'm going to be poking this spoke through. Okay, so you just gotta be really careful you don't lose this eyelet. So the eyelet's on there. We've got our bent part of the spoke there. And now it's time to actually glue it on. Okay, so let's get it in the right spot. Let's do a dry fit first, make sure it fits. Okay, so there's a bent part. And there we go, there it is, there it is going into the channel. Okay, so that's probably a little bit longer than I would like. So I'm just going to trim the end off a little bit. So I need to take off about a mil. Let's just do a trim. Let's try that again. Now that's pretty perfect. See that? And you can already see how much thinner that particular spoke is compared to the originals. Okay, next step, we're going to glue it together. So I've just got a, a little bit of... Uh, little container there where I'm going to put my CA. Now I'm using Zapper Gap. I find medium type super glue or CA the easiest to use. It tends to um, um, ball or I could guess you could say stays in one particular surface rather than running everywhere. So I've put a little bit just on the top of that container so I've got a bit of control. I'm just going to use a cocktail stick or a skewer. I'm just going to apply some of this to the inside hub first. Okay, so we're, uh, you see that. Get a bit of this CA. Pop it inside here. Like so. I'm just gonna be careful how I'm handling this. Here's my spoke. Just making sure that the uh, little eyelet's still in the center there. Press this in place. Like so. Okay, so we've got the spoke glued to the inner hub now. And that's going to take a little bit of time for it to actually set. And now I'm going to glue the spoke to the outer. So just put a glue here. Apply the glue. And just press that into place. Okay, so you can see how that's all glued in now. Such a big difference between this particular spoke to the others. And that's practically it. You just repeat this same process for every single one. So basically what I'll do now is I'll start working on this spoke, and then this spoke. So you have three spokes which are wire holding it all together. And then I'll cut off all the extras and repeat the process again. Okay, so what I've got now is I've still got the eyelet, which is just floating in the center there. Normally I would prefer to wait until this is fully set before I, I locate that eyelet. But as a demonstration, I'll just show you what I do now. So I'll just get a little bit of this, this CA. And we'll apply it on the bottom here. And we'll just slowly push this eyelet to the edge here, to where the glue is, making sure it's flat. 
and that's it. So let me see if I can zoom this in further. See how far I can go here. There we go. Okay, so that's one spoke done. So you see, it didn't take particularly long time, but because we're going to be doing 72 of these on each single wheel, it's going to take a little bit of effort and concentration. You can see how cleanly it's, it's fit. See how it's pretty flush there. And after this is all sandwiched together, it's going to be held together very, very strongly. Now what we'll do now is, after this is set, I'll probably apply some more glue across the top, just to increase the surface area, also with this one. Just to make sure it doesn't come out as you're working on the other spokes. And that's practically it. So there you go, that is my tutorial on how to re-spoke a wheel. And what have I done here? Probably gone too close there. So just with a few tools that I've demonstrated, you can go from this to this. Okay, so that's, that's chalk and cheese. Now as we move on to there, perhaps I should talk about what to do when you start moving on to some of the harder parts, which is going to be those curved sections. So you can see there. So what we'll be doing is we'll do the flat parts first. So you finish this one. Once you finish that one, we'll do this one. This is actually the back section that this sits in. So once you screw this all together, it'll maintain a center point. And then you do exactly the same as we did before. You start replacing one spoke. And as you replace the spoke, it just means that as it comes down to this angle, you need to do a slight bend on the end. But it's exactly the same process. Which is going to leave you with this. Now if I unscrew this, this will give you a better idea of how it's gone together. But just with a little bit of effort like that, this particular wheel has improved tenfold easily. So this is held in with some very tiny screws, which is a good thing. What I'll be doing is uh, once I have these completed, I will be gluing these as well as using the screws. And then we'll be making sure that the wires are totally clean. We'll get some uh, alcohol, rub them down, get rid of any oils that are on them use some metal primer and then I'll use some thick primer to go over all the wheels because when you look at the real ones they're actually quite rough up close and then we'll be painting them black so actually I've got a couple more screws in the back here so it is put together quite well that's going to come apart now and when you see how these individual rings have come about you have a better understanding of what's been done still getting held in in here So it is quite delicate, so you want to be careful when you're, you're handling. And you don't want to pop out any of these screws because you don't want to lose the screws. They won't be the easiest to replace. There we go. Starting to come apart. These screws in the center here are a bit tight. not being very friendly okay so here we go so here's one ring second
third and the fourth. And you can see how these bigger ones have been angled. Okay, so just do the, the flat ones first, they'll be the easiest ones. And then do these two which are curved last. And once they all get pulled together with all the screws, they'll work out perfectly and you'll end up with a beautiful wire wheel just like that. So there you go. So thank you for joining me. <coughs> that is my tutorial on how to make wire wheels specifically for the Italeri 112 scale Fiat Mephisto Fairly. So there we go. Let me see if I can pull this in really tight. It's probably too tight now, isn't it? Where are we going? Let's pull it back a bit there. How's that? There you go, so these are wire wheels. You can just see all those brass eyelets down the bottom there. And they add to that as well. Even though they're going to be painted black, they won't be as noticeable, but you will definitely see them there. So there you go. That is the wire wheels. So thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please consider uh, giving me a like down the bottom. And if you'd like to see more of this, please consider subscribing. So thank you for watching.